Hesia Mirovna Helfman, Romanized, Hesia Mirovna Jelfman, 1855, Mazir, 1 February 1882, St. Petersburg, was a Russian revolutionary member of Narodny Avalya, who was implicated in the assassination of Tsar Alexander II. Born into a Jewish family, Helfman left home for Kiev at the age of 16 or 17, allegedly to avoid an arranged marriage, where she found employment in a sewing factory. In the early 1870s, Helfman was an active member of several revolutionary clubs in Kiev where she met, among others, Leo Deutsch and her future husband Nikolai Kolikovich. Helfman was sentenced to two years imprisonment at the Litovsky Castle during the 1877 trial of the 50, and on March 14, 1879 was sent into exile to the province Novgorod. She escaped a few months later and joined Narodny Avalya in St. Petersburg, probably following her husband who was a member of the organization's executive committee. In 1881 Helfman was part of the Narodny Avalya group that assassinated Alexander II, albeit not in a frontline position. She was assigned to run a conspiratorial flat. Where she lived with another member of the group, Nikolai Sablin, as an unsuspicious apparent married couple. When the police raided their apartment, two days after the deadly attack on the Tsar, Sablin shot himself while she was captured. Hesia Helfman on trial Nikolai Kolikovich, Hesia Helfman's husband during the Pervomar Tofsi trial in March 1881, Helfman refused to admit her guilt, but was nonetheless sentenced to death by hanging for her alleged part in the assassination of the Tsar. A few hours after being convicted, she made a statement that in view of the sentence I have received, I consider it my moral duty to declare that I am in the fourth month of pregnancy. Her husband Nikolai Kolikovich had also been arrested in January 1881. According to contemporary law execution of pregnant women was banned as the fetus was considered innocent. Therefore, Helfman's execution was officially postponed until 40 days after childbirth, and in the meantime she would stay in the harsh Peter and Paul Fortress prison. Three months later, thanks to the campaign against her execution by socialists in Western Europe and in the foreign press, Helfman's sentence was commuted to an indefinite period of Katarga. She was transferred back to the remand prison where she had been held before. On 5th of July, while still in the Peter and Paul Fortress and by permission of the Minister of the Interior, Count Ignatiev, she was granted an interview with a journalist from the newspaper Galos who was accompanied by her defense counsel at her trial, a lawyer named Gork. During the course of this interview, she complained about the lack of proper medical and female attendance. Helfman gave birth in detention in October 1881. Upon the request of the Department of Police, her childbirth was assisted by a gynecologist who was also employed by the imperial court, something unprecedented. She had a severe maternal complication, as her perineum was torn. It was rumored that the gynecologist had refused the prison doctor's suggestion to sew the wound together, in any case, it never healed. She remained delirious during some of the postnatal period. By 24th of November, she had developed peritonitis, which became acute on January 17, 1882. She nevertheless nursed her daughter from her birth in October until 25 January, when the baby was taken away from her, placed in an orphanage and registered as a child of unknown parents. According to the subsequent medical report, the peritonitis became general and caused fever on the same day. Six days later, Helfman died. Her child died of an unknown disease shortly thereafter. Tsarist authorities had rejected the request of Kolikovich's parents for the legal custody of the baby. Kolikovich died in prison in 1884. The importance of Helfman's role in the assassination was undetermined, and her Jewish origin stressed during the pogroms that followed the assassination. Another conspirator, Ignatza Renuayetsky, was also rumored to be Jewish, though there seems to have been no basis for this. Revolutionary Sergei Stepniak Kravchinsky dedicated a chapter of his underground Russia to Helfman, the only one dedicated to a person he had not met personally. Writes Stepniak, there are unknown heroines, obscure toilers, who offer up everything upon the altar of their cause, without asking anything for themselves. They assume the most ungrateful parts, sacrifice themselves for the merest trifles, for lending their names to the correspondence of others, for sheltering a man, often unknown to them, for delivering a parcel without knowing what it contains. Poets do not dedicate verses to them, history will not inscribe their names upon its records, a grateful posterity will not remember them. Without their labor, however, the party could not exist, every struggle would become impossible. Yet the wave of history carries away one of these toilers from the obscure concealment in which she expected to pass her life, and bears her on high upon its sparkling crest, to a universal celebrity. Then all regard this countenance, 
which is so modest, and discern in it the indications of a force of mind, of an abnegation, of a courage, which excite astonishment among the boldest. Such is precisely the story of Jesse Helfman. Stepniak, Underground Russia, Revolutionary Profiles and Sketches from Life. Thanks for watching.